Good morning. Welcome to worship today with the people who are Culpeper Presbyterian Church. So grateful to have all y'all with us today. As we begin worship today, I've got a handful of announcements to bring to y'all's attention. Uh, we are, I'm going to start with the handful of inserts in your bulletin, because there's a bunch of them. One's a hymn. We'll get to that at the appropriate time. One is a nice big flyer for a church potluck that we are planning on January 29th following the worship service. So breakfast casseroles, fruit, pastries, cheese, veggie tails, ham biscuits, any other brunch goodies, and we will enjoy a time of fellowship after the worship service. There won't be Sunday school that day, but we will have a big feast on the 29th. Uh, that will be, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. This will be my first potluck at this church, I believe. Um, so yeah, I'll, I know some of y'all can cook, but I'm looking forward to what everybody can do. Uh, that will be lovely. Second of all, we have some guest musicians this morning. Choose, Christian Who's Exalt, uh, and that's these wonderful folks over here. Uh, you can see their names there in the inserts. Um, uh, which one of you is Kelsey Snyder? Your great-grandfather built that communion table, and I believe also the baptismal font. Um, so just a, a little family connection there. Also, I have a note here. And also the pulpit? Cool. Um, it's, it's still in good shape, so good job. Um, and apparently her great-great-aunts were Eleanor Kwan and Cornelia Corder. Um, so uh, welcome home, I guess. Um, so uh, we are very grateful for them and their leadership of worship with us today. Uh, and thank you all for making the trip up here. We're, we're very glad to have you. Uh, other announcements this morning. Uh, Sign-ups are available for communion table flowers and ministry donations for 2023. Uh, there's a chart in the narthex where you can write your name or you can also use the link in your email. So check out your email and uh, sign up or uh, write your name on the outside for there. Uh, during the winter months, we do continue to do our Adopt a Highway project. The grass doesn't need cutting quite so often, but people still throw trash out their windows, so we go out there and pick up. Uh, if you are able, uh, you can sign up for a two-week block to help pick up litter out on 299. Uh, there's a link in your email. Call the church office. Uh, there's not any specific work day. You just go when it's convenient for you, so if you're someone for whom our regular work days don't fit your schedule, this is a great time for you to jump in and participate. The Mana Yard Sale is coming up. That'll be Saturday, February 4th. So start collecting your items now. We will need help moving to things, uh, need help moving things to the Fellowship Hall on Friday, February 3rd. That's also when you can drop off your things, uh, from what I'm told. So if you have a house full of stuff, um, that you are ready to share with other families and help feed our neighbors. Uh, the Mana fundraiser is a, or the Mana yard sale is a wonderful fundraiser for that ministry. The white rose on the communion table is given to the glory of God in the memory of Betty Farrar, who passed away a little over a week ago. And uh, please continue to keep her family in your prayers. Uh, I have one additional announcement that I'm going to invite Aaron McElroy to come forward and talk about. Good morning. So I want to talk to you guys about uh, Call Pepper Presbyterian Church gear, like the ability to actually have for clothing that, uh, that puts us all together here. Um, one of the discussions we've been having in the mission committee is about, um, you know, we're out in the community a lot. People are like Joseph talked about cleaning up and doing different things. Um, but one of the things that we've been talking about is being more intentional about supporting each other. And so that would be things like, uh, you know, if, if we've got a, a, a child in, in our uh, in our church or somebody we want to support, maybe we show up at their recital, we show up at their game, we show up at something that they're doing, and we'd like to show up in force. We have this vision of, well, wouldn't it be great if some kid looked out and he saw a bunch of, you know, people from the church there supporting him, a little cheering section. Well, it's hard to know it if you can't tell who they are, if they're not wearing something. So we started thinking, well, it would be neat if they had, if we had gear, if we had clothing that identified us as, as that. And so then you go in the debate of t-shirts, sweatshirts, who knows what, you know, I don't wear the same size as everybody else, so I don't want to go a little tight. So the idea uh, Tammy had was create a Land's End store. 
And so lands in, if you guys haven't done it before, you have this ability where you can go in and order something that you like, whether it's a t-shirt with a sweatshirt, a quarter zip, totally up to you. But you can buy what you like. You can get it with the Culpeper Presbyterian Church uh, logo. If it's a different size or a different color, they'll match it so that it looks right. Um, you know, but the idea is, is, you know, no pressure to buy it, but we kind of want to get, get them so that when we, we do start to go out more and more, we, we, people know who we are when we're out in the community. So um, Tammy put together the, the QR code on there. You can just scan that with your phone. It takes you right there. You can order it. It comes to your house. And um, we just appreciate you guys taking a look at it. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron, for that announcement. Uh, that's all the, let me make sure, I got a bunch of post-it notes. Yes, that's all the announcements I have this morning. Um, one quick reminder, we are continuing to do uh, passing the plates. We just brought that back. Uh, there are single servings of Purell at the end of your pew if you want that after touching the um, plate that everyone else in the world has touched. And also in the back of your pews, there is this little laminated bookmark thing uh, for those of us like me who do online giving, so you can still participate in the ritual of putting things in the plate if you so choose. So just a reminder of that, and you will see how that works um, at the appropriate time later on in the service. So now let us turn and greet one another. Good morning. As we gather this morning, Lord, we ask that you would open our ears so that we may hear your voice, open our minds so that we may receive your eternal wisdom, and open our hearts so that we may receive your wonderful love. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit as we call ourselves to worship using the responsive liturgy printed in your bulletin or appearing on your screen. Give to the Lord glory and power. Give to the Lord the glory to his name. The Lord's voice is strong. The Lord's voice is majestic. The Lord sits enthroned king forever. Let the Lord bless his people with peace. Let, Let us, us worship, worship God. God.
Scripture tells us that if we say we are without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not within us. However, if we confess our sins together, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Therefore, let us humbly approach the throne of grace, boldly proclaiming our sins together, using the unison prayer that is printed in your bulletin or appearing on your screen. Let's pray. Lord of all creation, forgive us, for we have sinned. We show partiality according to our preferences and place our own judgment above yours. We call unclean what you have made pure. Help us to give our judgments and to watch for your guidance. Give us the faith to listen for your spirit when you speak in new ways. Teach us to be astonished by your grace as you shower it upon us and all people. Amen. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power over us. He prays for us. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. As we come to a time of reading and proclamation of God's word, let us also join together in prayer. Dear Lord, we are your people and you are our God. May these words from Holy Scripture bless those who hear them and may your Holy Spirit speak through the one who reads them. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Our first reading today comes from Matthew, 3 verses 13 to 17. Hear now the word of the Lord. At that time, Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan River so that John would baptize him. John tried to stop him and said, I need to be baptized by you, yet you come to me? Jesus answered, allow me to be baptized now. This is necessary to fulfill all righteousness. So John agreed to baptize Jesus. When Jesus was baptized, he immediately came up out of the water. Heaven was open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God coming down like a dove and resting on him. A voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I dearly love. I find happiness in him. This is the word of the Lord.
Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite the children to come forward for a time especially for them. Good morning. Glad to have the three of y'all here today. Uh, this is a silver bowl. Can you read what it says on there? That's right. This is a silver bowl that for years and years and years was used to baptize children in this congregation. An elder would hold this bowl and the preacher would hold the baby and they'd put water on the head of the baby to baptize them. And over the years uh, that I have been here, I use it to pour water in to this big bowl here because I think it's fun for everyone to be able to see the water. Because all of us belong to God, and our baptism is one of the ways that we show that. So I know you were baptized because I was there. I'm pretty sure the two of y'all are as well. And when that happens, we put water on your head, and we say in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, I baptize you. And then the congregation makes promises to help love you and take care of you and to help your parents raise you in the church and all of us make those promises for each other. Now I was baptized at First Presbyterian Church of Woodruff, South Carolina many many years ago back in the last century. That always gets a laugh. Um, and uh, but I did not grow up in that church. My family, when I was about three and a half years old, moved to a different church in a different state, First Presbyterian Church of Morganton, North Carolina. And you know what? My baptism still counted because God only has to claim us one time for it to be true forever. And so when a church makes a promise, it does so not just for the people in the room, it the church makes the promise of a baptism for every church in the world forever. So that if you move or if you change churches or if you grow up and go to a different church because you have a job in a different place, that church still loves you because you're baptized. We love everybody, or we're supposed to. We're supposed to love everybody that God loves. And our baptism is one way of remembering that God loves us. And so every Sunday, when I pour water into that bowl, I want you to think about how because you are baptized, you know that God loves you forever. Even if you mess up, even if you make mistakes, even if you do things that hurt God's feelings, God still loves you. And your baptism is a way for you to always remember that. And so that's why I pour it out every week is to remind people of that. And the gospel story that Miss Barb just read is a story of when Jesus got baptized. And that's the Bible story we heard today. All right, I'd like to say a prayer with you all. Well, I, I'll start and you repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for water and for love and for baptism. Amen. All right, you can go back and sit with your grown-ups. Old Testament reading this morning comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 42, beginning at verse 1. Hear again the word of the Lord. But here is my servant, the one I uphold, my chosen, who brings me delight. I've put my spirit upon him. He will bring justice to the nations. He won't cry out or shout aloud or make his voice heard in public. He won't break a bruised reed. He won't extinguish a faint wick. But he will surely bring justice. 
He won't be extinguished or broken until he has established justice in the land. And the coastlands await his teaching. God, the Lord says, the one who created the heavens, the one who stretched them out, the one who spread out the earth and its offspring, the one who gave breath to its people and life to those who walk on it, I, the Lord, have called you for a good reason and will grasp your hand and guard you and give you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the nations, to open blind eyes, to lead the prisoners from prison, those who sit in darkness from the dungeon. I am the Lord. That is my name. I don't hold out my glory to others or give praise to idols. Things announced in the past, look, they've, they've already happened. But I am declaring new things. Before they even appear, I tell you about them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you join me in prayer? Great and gracious God, you who promised that if the disciples were silent, the very stones would shout, speak now through your servant. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. My friend John was at least 50 years my senior. He had a spry, elfish quality about him that covered a highly educated theological mind. And he came from a time when pastors smelled like pipe smoke and parchments. And he could move through a room totally unnoticed, or he could command the attention of all in attendance. And each year, he would lead the staff of Tri-Cities Work Camp in their opening devotional, preparing them to serve the teenaged campers who would arrive later that afternoon. A bit of context here, Tri-Cities Work Camp is one part church camp, one part mission trip. It takes place down in Petersburg once uh, for a week or two each summer, and it sends teenagers from all up and down the East Coast into the inner city of Petersburg to rebuild homes and lives. And sometimes that means repainting an elderly woman's living room, brightening her life and giving her new energy to host her neighbors. And sometimes that means finding a rotting kitchen floor and demolishing it down to the foundations and then rebuilding it so that it can support the weight of a family meal once again. High schoolers, groups of six to eight of them, do this work. Now, they're supervised by experienced contractors, but the kids are the ones accomplishing these amazing things. And a 14-year-old rising ninth grader who arrives at the beginning of the week, having never even held a hammer, will go home knowing how to run a skill saw like an expert. But those children, and sometimes the grown-ups who chaperone them, sometimes come to work camp scared. The first years don't know what to expect. Those who have been before might be worried that the, maybe their friends from previous years didn't return again. And some of the teenagers come from homes that are not as caring, as supporting as we might like. And so they end up bringing their baggage along with their luggage. And so for years, my friend John would lead the staff through a devotional before the campers arrived, trying to get our minds, our souls right to serve them as they served the community. And one year, knowing the fear that the campers might be bringing along with them, he based his devotional on this passage. They're coming to us as bruised reeds. He told us, holding up a long stalk of grass which had creased over on itself. They're coming to us as bruised reeds. They need us to be gentle. That image 
of a wild and wise 70-something-year-old man dancing around a makeshift worship space, waving a nearly broken green blade of grass has never left me. You see, our tradition, the Presbyterian tradition, is drawn from an emphasis on God's sovereignty. Our God is strong enough to rule over creation and is powerful enough to bring justice to the nations. We worship the Lord, the one who created the, the heavens, the one who stretched them out, the one who spread out the earth and its offspring, the one who gave breath to its people and life to those who walk upon it. And knowing that my God is powerful is a comfort to me in my own weakness. I sympathize with John the Baptist who coming face to face with God, recognizes his own unworthiness in the face of Jesus. I need to be baptized by you. Yet you come to me? In the verses preceding what we read this morning, John gives a speech about the coming of Christ, who's already laid the axe at the root of the trees, who will separate the wheat from the chaff. He's urging people to bear fruit that shows they have changed their hearts and lives. John calls for justice to be established in the land. Now, I don't know about y'all, but when I picture a bringer of justice... I think of a knight in shining armor, defeating evildoers with divine conviction and zeal. Or, for a more modern image, I think of huge crowds marching on those who would keep them oppressed, chanting and singing and demanding justice. I don't usually think of my friend John dancing around with a leaf to encourage us to be kind to children. But maybe that is the kind of justice that we need more of right now. Maybe instead of a cosmic battle of good versus evil, where all who oppose us are our enemies, maybe instead we need a gentle justice that sees the bruised reeds that need healing. Maybe instead of demanding that the faint wick burn more brightly, we need to move more gently and nourish it. In a culture that is filled with public spectacles and publicity stunts and political posturing, maybe we need a gentle justice that doesn't cry out or shout aloud or make its voice heard in public. Maybe we need a gentle justice that treats those around us as though they're trying their best. And instead of fixing them, simply loves them and waits until they're ready to hear it before we try and show them a better way. Maybe instead of looking for the axe lying at the root of the tree, we need to look for ways to not break a bruised reed. Because teenagers on their way to summer camp are not the only ones who are frightened. When the time came for Jesus, God's chosen, in whom the Lord delights to fulfill all righteousness. He didn't wipe out injustice with floods or sweep away the wicked with storms. Instead, Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan River so that John would baptize him. Jesus brought justice to the nations with gentleness, choosing to join humanity in a baptism of repentance which his sinlessness means he did not need. Jesus didn't need to repent, but he chose to join in our struggle, healing our bruises by gaining his own. And rather than striking at the darkness, 
he sits with us in it. And then he leads us out of the dungeon. Perhaps in a world so bruised and battered by the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, we can follow Christ into a gentle justice which allows even a bruised reed to grow. The Lord, our God, who is strong enough to fulfill all righteousness and establish justice in the land, chooses to do so with gentleness. And so perhaps we, with our own bruised faith, should follow in that way. After all, isn't there enough brokenness already? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, having heard the word of God read and proclaimed, let us affirm the faith that we share using the words of the Apostles' Creed, which is printed in your bulletin or appearing on your screen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. With what should I approach the Lord and bow down before God on high? asked the prophet. Having encountered God in the word, read and proclaimed, let us now respond in gratitude by sharing the gifts that God has given us 
not only through our tithes, which may be shared in the offering box in the narthex or online, but also with visual offerings that extend our discipleship to offering all aspects of our life. Therefore, in gratitude to God for all that God has done for us, through us, and on our behalf, let us meditate on the many gifts God has given us. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, King of the universe. We rejoice in the grace we have been given and seek to serve you by cheerfully giving these offerings to glorify and serve you. Use these offerings to pour out your love upon all people through your church. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Exalt, also known as Choose. We are UVA's first and only Christian a cappella group, and we are so glad to be here with y'all today. We are singing Alabaster Box by C.C. Winans. 
Um, if you'd like any more information about our group, we have the little insert in the bulletin. And thank you so much for having us today.
Boy, I'm glad I put that after the sermon so I don't have to preach now. Our worship continues with a time of prayer for one another and for the world. And as you do so, I direct your attention to the pastoral concerns section uh, of your bulletin. Insert for a list of sp specific prayer requests. If you would like uh, something to be added to that list, please contact the church office. We'll be happy to include that uh, for future weeks. If you have something you're struggling with in your life that you would like for me to join you in prayer for, uh, but don't necessarily want spread throughout the whole community, uh, feel encouraged to reach out to me directly, and I'll be glad to join you in prayer uh, for that as well. Uh, in making this a true prayers of the people, it has become our tradition in this place to leave space in the midst of our prayer so that uh, folks here in the room can lift up their prayer concerns uh, and I will repeat them as I hear them uh, for the sake of the live stream and the sound system, and then I will say, in joy and in sorrow, to which you respond, we will never walk alone. If you are worshiping with us online, you can put those prayer requests in the chat on the YouTube or on Facebook, uh, where our live streams can be found. Uh, those will be read aloud by someone here in the room, and we will do the same thing with them. In joy and in sorrow, let's pray. God of alabaster box, boxes, of bruised reeds, and of mighty trees, we ask, O Lord, that you pour out your Spirit on us this and every day. For it is only through the power and working of your Holy Spirit that we can respond as we ought. And we know that the gifts you have been given, that you have given us, we know that the gifts you have given us are greater than we could ask or even imagine, and that you choose to work within us nevertheless, gently guiding us towards your judgment, paths of righteousness for your name's sake. We ask, O oh Lord, that you lift us up, that as your disciples we might not only follow you, but lead people to you. Help us to share the grace and love we find in you with all those whom you have given us to love so that we might gently go together into the good night you have prepared for each of us. Lord God, we lift up especially those who are struggling with medical issues. We ask that you reach out your healing touch through to them and that you be at work in their medical care teams, granting them wisdom to see what needs to be seen and to consider the possibilities so they can best understand how to heal your people. We also pray for those who mourn, O Lord. Comfort them and help us to be a comfort to them as they grieve. Fill us with compassion for them that they might know that even when healing does not look like a medical recovery, they are still not left alone, but they are gathered in with all of those whom you love. Lord God, this morning we pray especially for Dorothy Jones. In joy and in sorrow, we, will never we pray for Franklin Degatani. In joy and in sorrow, we will for the family of Betty Farrar. In joy and in sorrow, we will never for Jeannie Schrader. In joy and in sorrow, we will never walk alone. for Kim Long and Judith Edwards. In joy and in sorrow, we will never walk alone. Anne Racy. for Anne Racy. In joy and in sorrow, we will never walk alone. Dennis for Dennis Lighting. In joy and in sorrow. For all unborn babies, in joy and in sorrow. We will never walk alone. Joe For Joe Catone, in joy and in sorrow. We will never walk alone. For Alicia Zellers, in joy and in sorrow. We will never walk alone. For Dave Richardson, in joy and in sorrow. We will never For Turner Allen Day, in joy and in sorrow. We will never walk alone. Via For Joanne Scott, in joy and in sorrow. We will never walk alone. Via Bed Family. 
for the Yvette family in joy and in sorrow. For Betty and Ned Turner, in joy and in sorrow. We will Indeed, O oh God, we never walk alone. For you go ahead of us to prepare a place for us. You go beside us, accompanying us every step of the way. And you follow behind us, hemming in our journey. Christ, you surround us. Surround us with your love and fill us with your grace so that as we carry these treasures in our earthen vessels, we might be filled to overflowing, and you, we might become conduits of your grace and love throughout all the world. We ask all this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Join us following worship over in the fellowship hall for a coffee break and then following that some Sunday school. Uh, there are a number of wonderful classes and I understand that Soul Sisters is starting a new book this morning. So now's a great time to jump in and join with that group this morning. I also invite you, if you've been worshiping with us regularly and would like to explore next steps in your discipleship journey and possibly joining with this community of faith, uh, I invite you to start that conversation with me or with one of the elders on the door. We would be delighted to have that conversation with you. And now I invite you to receive the benediction in words and in music. Now may the God of peace, who brought back from the dead that great shepherd of the sheep, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the blood of the eternal covenant, 
equip you to do every good thing by developing in us what pleases him through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory forever and always. Amen. Hello again. I'm so grateful you joined us for our service of worship. As Presbyterians, we believe that being able to connect with one another is a gift from the Holy Spirit. And your digital presence among us is valued by the people who are Culpeper Presbyterian Church. If you're regularly worshiping with us online, be sure that you're subscribed to our channel or have liked our page so they don't miss other opportunities to connect with this family of faith. I also encourage you to leave a comment below with something from this service that you found meaningful or about which you're, you are curious. This is a community where questions are not only welcome, but are encouraged. Share this video as well so that others have a chance to shape how we follow Jesus together. Lastly, if you are looking for a family of faith with whom to continue to grow in your own discipleship, Please reach out to us through the links in the description below, and we'll be happy to have that conversation with you. Thanks again to, for worshiping with us. Remember to love one another, and we will see you Sunday, if not before.